Welcome to eMentor's webinar series with your host, Andrew Pea, Program Manager at eMentor. This is a recording of our live webinar. After you've finished watching, please head over to our website, www.ementorprogram.org, to see the lineup for future webinars and to learn more about the eMentor program. And now let's get started. So welcome to everyone who is joining. Uh, my name is Anne Tropea. I am the program manager at eMentor, and I am super excited to have Joanna Ain here today to talk to us about taxes. Um, we'll just give everyone a few more minutes to join, and then we'll get started. So we have a lot of good stuff to cover. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Anne Tropea. I am the program manager at eMentor. Um, we have with us Joanna Ain, the Associate Director of, Pol of Policy at Prosperity Now. In this role, she focuses on policies that help working families save and support, save and support turning the tax code right side up. Joanna came to Prosperity Now after six years at the Housing Corporation of Arlington, a nonprofit community development corporation in Arlington, Massachusetts. Joanna holds a master in public administration from Harvard Kennedy School of Government and graduated cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts in History from Cornell University. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it over to Joanna um, and get started with this great presentation about everyone's favorite topic, taxes. Thanks so much, Anne, and uh, thank you so much for having me. This is really fun. To, I know some of you might not feel that way, but for me, it is fun to talk about taxes for, for an hour or so and to, to kind of share some tidbits I've learned and um, that we know about and how to kind of think about your taxes and some changes that we've seen over the past year. Um, so we're going to go through seven things you should know about filing your taxes this year. But before I get started with that, um, I'll talk a little bit about my, myself and, and thank you so much, Anne, for the introduction. Um, I'm Joanna Ain. I'm an Associate Director of Policy at Prosperity Now. I've been here almost seven years. I focus on um, tax policy and savings policy. Uh, and I um, have done a lot of work around funding for free tax prep organizations and pushing to get um, more tax credits for working families or for families. So that's generally um, the, the kind of work I do, uh, but excited, again, excited to be here and, and to talk taxes with you all. So I just wanna quickly um, talk about prosperity now. Our mission is to have an economy that is uh, fair and free from structural racism. We want every person, every family, every community to have the power to build uh, sustainable wealth and prosperity. And the way we think about um, building wealth, building prosperity for people, um, whoever they may be, a big part of that is having a tax code that supports them. And a big part of that is making sure people can access um, good uh, tax preparation services, making people, making sure people understand all the different kinds of tax credit, credits and benefits they can get through the tax system. So all of these things that really can boost your tax refund or um, and help your family uh, build wealth, whether it's just a tax time or, or potentially throughout the year. And Prosperity Now, we don't just do policy work, we also do research. Um, we do do technical assistance, but again, the focus is um, making an economy where individuals can participate across their, their life cycle. Families can build sustainable wealth through generations, not just in the present moment, and communities can prosper. So that's just big picture what we do. So now, we're now going to get into the kind of like nitty gritty of the taxes, and I want everyone to take a deep, we're going to take a lot of deep breaths in this presentation because I know Taxes is not our favorite, might not be everyone's favorite thing to talk about, even though it's one of my favorite things to talk about. So we're going to take a, a lot of deep breaths. Everything's going to be okay. We have, uh, it's March 31st today, if you're watching this live. So it's, you have 19 more days uh, until that tax deadline. And we're going to talk some, some people have even more time to do their taxes. So um, deep breaths, uh, where I think taxes is something to get excited about, right? This is a time when you can um, uh, 
put or once you organize yourself and you get your papers together and you do your taxes, we can get a lot of benefits from doing our taxes. We can get a tax refund um, that can really uh, help our families throughout the year. So, so let's get excited. And we're going to talk seven things you should know about filing your taxes this year. So number one, many of you might know the American Rescue Plan um, passed in March 2021. I know that sounds like ages and ages ago. So it passed basically a year ago. And it made some um, temporary changes to uh, tax credits, really important tax credits for your families. Um, so we're going to I'm going to talk big picture about them. There's a, there's a lot more to know. But uh, first of all, many of us have heard about the expanded child tax credit. Um, the tax credit, the child tax credit, it's been around since 19, I think 1997. But this year, uh, a lot of really exciting things happened. And again, it's just for this year. It's not for, uh, it's not necessarily for next year that we hope it will be, but it's not, it's just for this year. Um, so the amount went up. Kids who are 17 couldn't get the child tax credit before, and they're now eligible to get that. Um, many of you might have seen uh, uh, advanced monthly payments um, come into your uh, come through your mailbox or into your bank accounts, which were really exciting. So families could get, um, depending on the age of the child, 300 or 250 a month per child starting in July 2021. Um, so a lot of really uh, exciting things. Oh, and maybe the most exciting thing was that families who do not have income uh, in 2021 can still uh, access this credit. So can still get this credit, which is, is very new. Um, so what's happening during, so we some people have those monthly payments. So what's happening uh, when you do your taxes um, this year, you're going to, many families are going to be getting the balance of those payments. So basically the second half of those payments. Um, so that's something just to keep in mind when you do your taxes. The Earned Income Tax Credit, the EITC, this is a, a really important uh, tax credit for working families. Um, a couple exciting expansions happened here. Um, it is now uh, for, for a, uh, a individual, someone without kids. Um, sometimes we call these folks childless workers. Uh, the, the, this tax credit has been uh, expanded by three times the amount. So uh, it used to be around 500. Now it's around 1500 if, if, if this person is eligible. Um, this tax credit, there was something else I was gonna say about this tax credit. So I think I'm gonna come back to that. But there's been a number of, again, there's been a number of great expansions in the EITC. Um, and then the child independent care tax credit, this has also grown this has also become what we call fully refundable. So again, you do not need income in order to access the child independent care tax credit this year. Um, so, and this people can access if they're, if your child goes to childcare or, or even day camp. Um, so a lot of really exciting uh, pieces just in within these three tax credits that were expanded this year. Um, so I think I'll keep going. I hope I remember that other thing I was gonna say about the EITC, but we'll see. Um, so number two, you might have heard that the IRS is backlogged. Um, there's been a lot of news about this. The IRS is using using data dated, excuse me, dated technology from the 1960s. They're understaffed. Um, people are, are getting their payments slowly. There's actually two things you can do in order to uh, avoid processing delays. So as you're thinking of doing your taxes, if even if you haven't started them yet. When you think about your decisions around doing your taxes, these are just two decisions you can make to make it um, easier for the IRS and therefore for you to um, get your, your tax paperwork through the IRS quickly and potentially get a refund. So one of those things is e-filing your taxes uh, for a variety of reasons. Many people want to use uh, paper, but e-filing them, that will make it much more much easier for the IRS to process them. The other big thing is um, direct deposit. So many of us, uh, me included in past years, I've wanted to kind of get the actual check. I, I, was, I didn't want to put in my bank account information, et cetera. But this, um, for the IRS, this isn't great because it just takes them longer. So really doing direct deposit, choosing that when you file your taxes is pretty important and putting in your bank information so that the IRS has an easier time um, processing your uh, 
processing your refund if you're eligible for one. Uh, number three, uh, this is another provision that was in the American Rest Plan for uh, last year and this year. Um, so I'll take a step back. Many tax credits, you get more um, tax benefit if you make more money. So uh, the folks that put this, this um, provision into law, they said you can use your, your 2019 income when you're for tax year for last year or this year, if it was more money, because that means that you'll either decrease your tax payment or you'll increase your refund because um, your EITC uh, would potentially go up. So this is something to keep in mind. This is something, you know, I know many of you are gonna be like, well, I don't know which one to use. Um, and that's fine. I think that's uh, a lot of the tax services we talk about, they'll be able to help you figure that out. Um, so, uh, again, something to keep in mind when you do your taxes. Um, number four, uh, when you file, you're going to, they're going to ask you, um, if you received an economic impact payment, an EIP, otherwise known as a stimulus payment, um, the third payments were given out in March of 2021. So the IRS is going to, when you fill out your form is going to want to know if you received it and how much you received. Same with the child tax credit, the CTC, they're going to want to know how much you received in advance monthly payments. Of course, many of us do not remember these things. Um, you should have been sent, uh, if you did receive these um, benefits, you should have been sent two letters from the IRS, uh, the 6475 for the EIP amount and the 6419 for the CTC. If you, like many others, including me, sometimes maybe throw out mail that you shouldn't have, um, or if you didn't get these letters, you can go to the IRS on your IRS online account. You can go to irs.gov and create an online account, and they should have this information for you to use when you fill out um, your information for doing your taxes. So, um, but just to keep in mind, this is gonna be something they ask. Um, and if you didn't get your EIP or your stimulus payment, and you should have, you can claim this as a tax credit. It's called the recovery rebate credit. And if you are owed more CTC, more of the child tax credit than uh, you are already given, you can get that too. So uh, just really important to keep in mind and another way, um, hopefully that folks can, can boost their tax refund. Uh, as I said, so number five, as I said, uh, Monday, April 18th, it's the tax filing deadline. However, um, for those of us who are owed a refund, you actually have up to three years to file uh, your taxes and receive it. So just something to keep in mind. I know a, a lot of us get nervous when we hear about a, a date. This is our deadline. We have to do our taxes by this. And it's a good idea to do your taxes by April 18th. Again, it's almost three weeks away, so we have some time. But something to keep in mind, if you're owed a refund, um, you can, you do have more time to do your taxes. A lot of the tax preparation services we're gonna talk about are open till October or November. Um, so so just, just something, again, to keep in mind if you need more time. Um, of course, if you owe taxes, you may have to pay a penalty um, on your taxes if you don't uh, do your taxes by the deadline. So again, something else just to keep in mind. Uh, number six, uh, as I, I've mentioned already, there are many free tax preparation services uh, all around the United States. Um, to quick, I, I, We're going to throw a lot of different uh, resources at you. I, I'll talk you through them. Um, I'm, I'm like looking at it and we're going to send out the slides after we can send out resources after just so people don't have to take notes or anything. Right. So I'm getting a nod from Anne. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Awesome. So, um, so don't worry about like keeping notes or anything. We'll, we'll get you this information. Um, but if you just want to quickly find out what tax, um, preparation service you're eligible for, or what free tax per preparation service you're eligible for. The White House has put together this um, really great site, childtaxcredit.gov. You can ask whether or not you have kids, you can still go to this website and find out um, what free tax preparation service you are eligible for. So it, it just like kind of, I'm going to go through these, but you can also just go to childtaxcredit.gov. Um, so there's a couple things you need to be quote unquote in income eligible for. Uh, there's a, um, the, the ones that I want to kind of plug 
Uh, first of all is get your refund. So this is gonna be getyourrefund.org. Again, we will send you all this. You don't have to take notes. And here it's gonna connect you with an IRS certified volunteer and they're gonna help you virtually file your taxes from free. The income limits for this particular resource are 66,000 or less. Um, so the, the volunteers that work um, do this work virtually with Get Your Refund, they come from the VITA program, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. Um, if you want in-person uh, uh, free tax preparation, you can go to your local VITA site. Um, in a second, I'll give you the, um, the website to go to to find that local VITA site. And these VITA sites will do in-person tax um, preparation with you. Uh, again, the volunteers are IRS certified. The income limit is 58,000 or less. So you do need to be making within that income limit. Um, and the, the great thing about the VITA sites, whether it's through the get your refund portal or through this in, these in-person sites that are all in every state across the nation, um, there's about 30, 3,800 sites. They The VITA program itself has been around uh, for over 50 years. So very exciting. Um, we, we had a birthday celebration a couple a couple of years ago. Um, over 50 years, again, everyone's um, IRS certified who who does these um, these these returns. Um, they've brought back in last year alone, they put back 1.7 billion dollars um, in funds back to the families who who families or individuals who did their tax returns with these Vita sites. They helped over one. 1 million people or 1 million households, I should say. So it's it's definitely a scaled up, it's it's not a fly-by-night group. It's very uh, scaled up, it's federally funded. Um, so really something to keep in mind as many of us don't wanna go online and they want kind of an in-person situation. They can also eat, when, I to when we talked about that e-filing and that direct deposit to make it easier for the IRS and therefore for you to get your tax refund, um, they can do that as well. So even though you're in person and you're working with them, they can still e-file your taxes and help you with that and help you with the direct deposit piece. Um, if you don't qual qualify for free tax help, another resource is myfreetaxes.com. Um, you can go there. This is uh, organized by United Way Worldwide, which I think is like the largest nonprofit in the nation or something crazy like that. Uh, there is support through an online chat. Um, so a number of uh, resources, whether whether or not you're affiliated with the military. However, oh, and this is, sorry, before I get there, uh, a little commercial break. To find the VITA site near you, you go to bit.ly backslash VITA locate. So if you want to check that out, um, that's a good resource. Sorry, but if you are affiliated with the military, there's a number of uh, other free options you might qualify for. Um, there's one through the military one source. Some of you might be familiar. Um, it's available for free for active duty, um, for, for families, for National Guard members, for reservists, for veterans who have left the service in the last 365 days. So that's a really um, important resource to know about. Um, there's actually a separate resource for Coast Guard service members and their families to file free online. Um, and then these two private companies both provide um, free filing service. So TurboTax provides um, filing service for free for all enlisted active duty service members, enlisted reserve personnel, and then Tax Slayer is free for active duty service members to e-file um, federal returns. However, with Tax Slayer, and this is just something to keep in mind, um, for, for, for depending on where you go for pr tax preparation, there will be additional fees if you do state tax returns. So just, just to keep in mind um, that, that the, doing federal returns can be free sometimes and then you pay for the state tax returns. However, it's really important to, um, I think, go to a, a reputable uh, tax preparation service, whether it's through VITA or something else. Um, Many, uh, many paid preparers, um, on average, they charge $220 to get your taxes done. A lot of those, those prices can go uh, way higher, especially when you're, if you're doing um, tax forms like for the EITC. Um, 
so we, you know, as much as possible, uh, we, um, the collective, we don't want to see people spending money when, when they don't need to spend it um, or where they don't need to spend it. So I think making, seeing what you're, uh, you're applicable for, seeing what um, services you can take advantage of is really important because again, that tax refund, it's a huge boost. Um, we know for many families and ind individuals, if most, not most families and individuals, and we don't want that money to, you know, be taken out to pay for, for a, a paid preparer if, if it can be, um, if it can be prevented. Um, and the other thing is obviously there, are, you know, we know around tax time, there's a number, there's scams going on. Um, there's people taking advantage of people um, who want to get their tax refund as soon as possible. So again, just really important to go to a reputable, um, a reputable service. Um, and if, and if you, you can, and if you're eligible, a free service. So I think that's what I got, Anne, but I'm guessing folks have, might have some questions that I can answer and, um, would love to chat more. I hope that was helpful at least to get us started. Definitely. Thank you so much, Joanna. That was so much great info. And I had, I had no idea about some of those resources. Um, and I wish that I had when I was an active duty military member, which was long ago, but um, I, I assume some of them were around even way back then. Um, we do have a question from Dave. He says, what's the most efficient way to file with the feds, federal government and pay what's, what's, what's owed, what's due? Um, and so what my takeaway is that Filing electronically is always going to be the most efficient. Is that, do I understand that correctly? Joanna? Yeah. I mean, I think again, when we're, we're avoiding getting caught up in the fact the IRS delays, et cetera, the most efficient way, e-filing, doing direct deposit, um, making sure all your paperwork is together, making sure you know that that stimulus the stimulus payment amount, making sure you know the CTC amount that your family has received. Um, and yeah, and definitely e-filing. Absolutely. Great. Now, if anyone else has questions, um, you can either uh, raise your hand or just ask the question right in the chat and we'll get to it. And so Dave has a follow-up question and he says, how best to pay what's due? If you owe taxes, how best to pay what's due? Um, I mean, I think see what what the uh, options are, and as again as much as possible, if you can keep it electronic, um, that that's the way to go. I know, Dave. I personally ended up sending a physical check to the IRS. And I can tell you they cash that um, very quickly. So <laughs> if you feel more comfortable doing that, um, you know, definitely do what's most comfortable. But um, usually electronically is pretty easy for most folks. Um, I had a quick question, Joanna. When you were talking about all of those free resources um, and kind of some income mm -hmm. caps, is that taxable? income or is that your gross income? So like for the Vita? Oh, uh, I think it's adjusted gross income. Okay. But I will get back. And some of these, I do have to say some of these um, income limits, uh, how do I say this? Um, it depends which site you go, especially with the Vita sites, it depends which site you go to. Some of them have options for people who are over income. So I really think it's worth um, checking out, um, especially depending on your individual uh, situation. There's also, I don't want to get into too many like um, kind of details, but there's also uh, AARP sites mm -hmm. um, for folks who are older. And, um, my and my understanding is a lot of those don't have uh, income limits. Um, and those uh, sometimes don't, you don't have to show that you're an older adult. So I think just um, checking out and seeing what your, your local Vita site can provide and what their resources are there is, is always a good plan. 
Yeah, that's a good point, Joanna. I mean, we don't, we want to make sure that we're exploring all of our options and not just assuming that we don't qualify when maybe we do for some of these resources. Um, so my other question was, we have a lot of our membership at eMentor either have small businesses or they're starting small businesses. Are there special resources or any kind of like insider tax info for um, for the small business owners out there? Yeah, um, I'm going to have to say, unfortunately, there aren't. Uh, <laughs> that is a problem. And that is something that we are thinking about in the policy world as people who really who know how critical small businesses are for, for all families. Um, you know, Vita sites don't really have the capacity to deal with um, small business income for the most part, um, though that's, again, something that you can ask your, if you go to a local Vita site, you can ask your particular Vita site. Um, but yeah, it is a, it is a, a problem. And, um, you know, we, we, uh, it, it's a problem that needs to be corrected. So that's something that we, we are working on and, and thinking about because we don't want, we know that these small business owners are going, you know, if you're, you're going to an accountant, they're going to be charging you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to get your taxes done. And you being a small business owner might, you know, that that's going to be a real dent in your, uh, income. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Let's see. We have a question from Beverly. She says, how would I create a Roth IRA or is there a better place um, uh, for windfall of money at age 65 to put? Mm -hmm. That's that's a great question. I am definitely not qualified to answer it. Uh, mm -hmm. You should definitely go to some kind of uh, financial professional. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to try there, but, uh, uh, that's exciting. And I, I wish you all the best with that decision. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even some, depending on where you bank, you may be able to set up a IRA or a Roth IRA right at your banking institution. Um, I know Charles Schwab makes it pretty easy to do that and to move money around. So you might look into that or, but absolutely, um, as Joanna said, make sure you talk to either a tax professional, like a tax preparer, or um, a financial advisor should be able to advise you as well in terms of um, the best way to kind of shelter money from, from uh, tax liability. Um, I was going to ask Joanna, if as an active duty service member or a veteran, aside from some of the resources available to the to those groups, are there any special tax considerations that um, we should be thinking about? Yes, there are a bunch. And I, you know, again, I think this is something when we're getting into the um, <clears throat> details of this, this is something that needs to be discussed with um a tax professional, but there are a bunch of things that if you're active duty, my understanding is that you could, I don't want to use the word take advantage, that 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 will that could benefit you in the in the tax process. Um, one is my understanding is that um for for non-taxable pay, you can sometimes use that to um, boost your in to use that towards your earned income to boost your EITC, your earned income tax credit. So that can be really um, important for families, um, whether it's combat pay or, or basic allowance for housing. My understanding is that um, active duty, they can um, make that, again, make that part of their, their full income um, so that your, your EITC, your earned income tax credit can be bigger. Um, the other thing that a lot of these um, tax, so a lot of these tax credits um, say the family needs to be living in the US for six months. Um, when active duty folks are outside the US, um, they that is considered in the US, right? Um, if they are working there. So um, they, the, the six months limit, I think it's, it's definitely for the EITC. I think it's also for the CTC that you need to be in the country for six months. Um, that does not apply. So that's also something important to keep in mind. Um, but but there may be a lot of other benefits uh, that I don't know about, which is, again, why it's important to um, get um, good help who is who is familiar with uh, P 
people and and to use your specific information to get um, help and fully um, get the tax refund you should be getting. Definitely. And Beverly asked for the website, and I believe I've pulled up one that should get you there. But if, Joanna, if you have a better um, site for for um, the volunteer income tax assistance, the VITA site. Yeah, so it's it's actually at the bottom of this slide. It's bit.ly backslash VITA locate. And again, we'll we'll provide these um, these websites for everyone uh, after the call. But you should be able to find a VITA site near you. You put in your zip code and it should come up with um, VITA sites who can do your uh, taxes nearby. Perfect. And just to remind everyone, um, I am, we are recording this webinar and it will be available on the eMentor website um, after, you know, uh, in, in just a few weeks and we'll send out um, an email notification about that as well. So go ahead, feel free to ask all of your questions. Um, I wanted to know, you know, Joanna, what do you think are the biggest mistakes that people make when they're filing their taxes or they're getting ready to getting all their stuff together to file every year? Um, it depends on the, it depends on the family. I think certainly with low income families, not, I mean, you're probably not gonna be surprised. I'm going to say this because I feel like this is, this is like one of my key points, um, is not, uh, taking, uh, not using free tax, um, prep services and going to some, maybe someone around the corner um, and paying hundreds of hundreds, hopefully not thousands, but hundreds of dollars to get their taxes done. Um, I think that's a, that's a mistake. Uh, personally, uh, I think people should not pay for things that they don't need to pay for. Um, other mistakes. Um, you know, I think, I think this year, my concern is, uh, in the past, um, so many people didn't file their taxes because they, they, their incomes were too low. And the, the difference is this year um, for families with kids, uh, you can access that child tax credit um, no matter if you're if you have no income, you still can get get a very very large benefit from that. So I think my fear is um, that this isn't a mistake. In past, this is a mistake. Hopefully, that won't happen. But I, I do fear that many families are not going to uh, realize that they can, even though that they've never done their taxes before. It may be scary, and they'll be intimidated. But they're not going to, if if they don't do their taxes, they're not going to get a lot of benefits that they they should be getting, um, especially the child tax credit, which they may they may uh, very well not have been uh, eligible for in the past. Um, so yeah, that I think you know that's and that's something that's. Um, you know, we're definitely pushing, um, I, I'm in DC, we're definitely pushing from uh, here in Washington. I know the White, you know, just talking from like a policy perspective, I know the, the White House is really uh, wants to make sure these, everyone gets what they're eligible for. Um, so that's something that that everyone, uh, everyone in kind of this tax space is hard at work on, especially at this moment when we're about you know, 19 days from the, from April 18th. And this is the time to push people to do their taxes. So uh, yeah, I hope, I hope that's a mistake that won't happen, but I, I, that is a concern of mine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that it's, it's very important. And that's kind of why uh, we thought it would be amazing to have you on Joanna, just to you know, raise a little bit of awareness about all of the new changes um, this year for taxes and make sure that all of our folks are able to take advantage of um, all the benefits that are out there. So we do have another question from Pat. Um, the question is, if you're not eligible for the free tax prep services, can you still use the free IRS software on their site? It walks you through uh, the process. You can use um, free file but I would actually go, if you are over income, I would actually go to myfreetaxes.com. Um, some of the free file, you just, I think um, 
because this this is free. Uh, some of the free file, if you are over income, you might be um, diverted to um, pay pay. But my free fat excuse me, myfreetaxes.com, you, you know, again, this is a, a free service. Uh, it's provided by the United Way. Um, and I think that is the way to go uh, if you if you are in, over income for, for many of these other programs. But free file is, is also certainly a possibility, uh, de again, depending on your income. Perfect. So I know we talked about it being the end of March already. In fact, the very last day of March. Um, uh, some people haven't started their taxes, let's be honest. <laughs> um, sometimes our financial institutions are slow to get us documentation or our employers. What would you say to people who may or may not be freaking out a little bit that they haven't started their tax prep? Um, so again, I think we all need to take a big deep breath. Uh, that's really important to keep breathing. Um, and I think locating, um, kind of making a list of what you need to do. Um, I guess I feel like this is with everything that we get, we have anxiety about, right. And taxes are just one of those things, but like making a list of what you do, um, you could even use these slides maybe to kind of think through that a little bit. Um, so, you, you know, the things you need to do, you need to find um, a tax preparation service that you're comfortable with and that you're eligible for. Um, you need to make sure to gather your documents. And if you're missing any documents, such as a W-2 um, or, or some documents from your bank, you just want to make, if you don't have them, you just want to make sure that you have a little bit of time to follow up with um, either, again, your employer, your financial institution, et cetera. Um, you can make a list of all, um, if you've had more than one job, um, make a list of the jobs you've had and the accounts you have and, and make sure you have all of the information you need from there. Um, again, make sure you, you know how much you got for the EIP, the stimulus payment in March, and um, those advanced monthly payments from the child tax credit uh, that started in July. Um, and and once you have all your information, I think just kind of, again, holding your breath and taking the plunge and get 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 your taxes done. Um, I know it can be intimidating and it's, it's I believe, way too complicated to get your taxes done, but um, it is something we have to do. And we wanna make sure that, ever, again, I, I repeat myself a lot, but everyone who is eligible for tax refunds, um, that they get them uh, as soon as possible because we know how, how, how much, um, these boosts in our income are needed. Absolutely. Do you think that it's better to file your taxes by the deadline and then potentially have to amend later? I mean, assuming like, let's say, you, you know, you don't have everything that you need. Would it be better to just file by the deadline and then, you know, reserve, you know, you can always amend your tax returns, right? I, I think the, the limit for, for doing that is several years down the road. Um, what, what's, what's your take on that? I think it depends on uh, the individual person's um, uh, situation. Um, that is an option, right? Amending uh, down the road um, that can lead to um, more uh, IRS delays, however, right? Depending again, what, what you're amending, are you looking to get more money back? Are you, do you need to pay more, whatever? Um, so really, yeah, it does depend on the person's situation, but it is, it is another um, option. There are, you know, I think there are options you can, wait till after April 18th and pay a penalty, you can amend. Um, there are there are a number of ways to kind of manage manage things. But I think right now that we have three weeks, let's let's try to get our stuff together and try to make it so we we don't have to do any of those things. Well, that's great advice. And I think, uh, Joanna, you've given us a lot of amazing resources so that we can pretty easily, or maybe not painlessly, but <laughs> relatively painlessly um, get, get, this, uh, get this chore out of the way, get our yearly, our yearly taxes out of the way. Um, I would like to thank you so much um, on behalf of eMentor and everyone for sharing this time with us and talking to us about taxes. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you. 
And just before we go, um, is there anything exciting coming up for you, either um, professionally with Prosperity Now, anything on the horizon that um, you want to share with with everybody? Um, what can I tell you all? Uh, we are, I think in terms of professionally, just something that we're really excited about is, uh, as I, I think I mentioned, we work, we do a lot of advocacy work around VITA, around the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. So we're now um, pushing for increased funding. So trying to, to strengthen VITA and to um, make it even more uh, impactful for people uh, and, and better for, for families and individuals who use it. So I'm really excited about that, that push that we're going to be doing this year. And um, we've had a lot of success in uh, expanding the amount um, the federal government gives VITA every year. And I'm hoping we'll have even more success in the future. That's so great. I, well, we hope to uh, talk to you again in the future and get some updates on all of this uh, exciting policy work that Prosperity Now is doing and that you're, that you are pushing forward. So again, thank you so much, Joanna, um, on behalf of eMentor and Academy Women. It really has been a pleasure. Um, so we will end now and uh, wish everyone a easy and a painless tax season. Absolutely. Thank you, Anne. Thanks, everybody. Thanks again for watching. If you would like to be the first to know about upcoming events, or if you're interested in receiving individual mentoring support or offering your mentoring expertise, please consider joining the eMentor program. Find out more by visiting our website at www.ementorprogram.org or send an email to admin at ementorprogram.org. Finally, feel free to follow along with eMentor on social media. We hope to see you next time.